Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan DeMere for 360 Works and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a mirror sync configuration. I'm going to move pretty quickly so let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, launch our mirror sync client, let it download and launch it. And when you log in here, you're going to want to make sure that you include the protocol in the server address, the IP address, and the host name, and uh, slash mirror sync. Let's go ahead and log in. We're going to set up a new sync. Uh, we're going to do FileMaker clients to FileMaker server, and we're going to call this task sync because we're going to use the task database that comes with FileMaker. Hit next. All these settings are correct. We're going to check the ignore SSL warning so we don't have an SSL certificate installed. Let's go ahead and put in our database credentials and our FMS, FMS admin credentials. And let's click choose. Now we'll, we don't have our database here in the list, so let's click on this button and it tells us that we need to include the FM REST extended privilege for the user. So let's go over to our task database. <coughs> Go into manage security, select our user, and edit the privilege set. We'll go down here and we're going to select FM REST. And we'll go ahead and authenticate. We'll hit choose, and now we see our task database in the list. You're also going to make sure that you have the data API turned on because that's now a requirement for Mirror Sync 6 because um, it no longer uses JDBC or XML. Go ahead and click next. All right, now we're going to do some file setup. The first thing is going to be copying over the mirror sync table from the mirror sync support database. That's in your downloads. Here it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. Let's go into manage database. We're going to copy the mirror sync table. Then we're going to go over to the same location in our task database. And we're going to paste it in. Hit OK. I'll go back to the config, and now you'll see we have a green check mark. The next thing is going to be getting the MirrorSync 6 folder from the script workspace. So let's go ahead and open that up, copy it, and then open the script workspace on the task database, and paste it in. The next part of that is going to be renaming the MirrorSync 6 script. So copy that, rename. Paste it in, and we go back to the config, and we now have a green check mark for step two. Next, step three is going to be changing the mirror sync URL in the mirror sync script. So let's copy this, go to the mirror sync script, choose the mirror sync URL variable, paste in our URL, hit OK, and save the script. And when we go back over to our config, step three now has a check mark. The next bit is to copy the mirror sync layout. So let's go over here to our support database, go to our mirror sync layout, do a select all, copy it, and we'll go back over to our task database, go over to the mirror sync layout. We're going to delete all the fields off the layout, as well as the header and the footer, and then we'll paste in the mirror sync layout. And then we're going to resize it so that it looks nice when we go back into layout mode. And there we go. And we have a check mark for step four. You can do these optional steps. We're not going to go over that in the video. Let's hit next. This screen talks about the three fields that are required for all syncing tables. That is a primary key, a creation timestamp, and a modification timestamp. Um, if these are not already a part of the tables that you want to sync, now is the time to go ahead and include them. An important note here is if you already have a field that you use for relationships, um, go ahead and use that. Don't make a specific key just for mirror sync, otherwise uh, mirror sync won't know about your foreign keys. The second part of this actually talks about sync layouts, and what's nice about sync layouts is it uh, creating them, it actually makes it easier to configure the sync as you'll see in uh, the next couple of screens. And it, you don't really want mirror sync to uh, sync with a pre-existing layout that may have like a trigger on it that you don't necessarily want to run during a sync. You have two options here. You can either um, sync all fields in a table or you can sync specific fields in a table. Um, 
if you want to sync all fields, it doesn't matter if you have all fields on the layout or no fields on the layout, but if you want to sync specific fields, you need to drag them out on the layout, but you also need to make sure that you include your primary key, your creation timestamp, and your modification timestamp. So let's go ahead and create a sync layout. Let's go to Manage Layouts. Let's click New. We're going to base it on our task table, and here we're going to give it a pre-qualifier of sync underscore, and that'll come into play later in the video, and name it after our table tasks. Finish to create our layout, and then let's go ahead and view this layout. And here's where you can drag out specific fields or leave no fields, whichever you feel like doing. You can select all of them or select specific ones. You can just drag them out onto the layout. We're going to go ahead and leave it empty so we can sync all fields uh, in the table. Um, all right, and let's go back over to our configuration client. Okay, let's go ahead and click next. Here we're going to enter some info for the spoke database. Um, we're going to go ahead and select sync with FileMaker client credentials and sync with an empty clone or complete copy of the main file. If you're trying to sync with a dedicated mobile file that's just a subset of your database, you'll want to choose sync with a separate mobile file. Let's click next. On the table selection screen, you're going to have two options. You can either choose the radio button to sync with selected layouts in which you can choose your sync layouts from this list, or as I alluded to earlier, starting in MirrorSync 6, you can choose this option where you can sync with all layouts that meet the qualifier in that text field. And that's pretty nice to have because that means that you can select this one option and all of your sync layouts will be included in your sync. And it also means that if you were to go back and create sync layouts later, you won't have to come back in and re-edit your configuration. They'll automatically be included in the sync. On this screen, we're going to configure some options for your tables. Um, up here at the top, you can set an administrative email where you can get emails for uh, different things. This uh, drop-down menu gives you some granularity you could do for sync failures only, or you can do something as detailed as get a sync detailed message even if there wasn't any changes. Um, you can also click on this advanced notifications button here, which um, will send you some notifications using your AWS account and push notifications to CloudWatch or Simple Notification Service. That's kind of out of the scope of the video, so we're not going to go over that. This next setting here is a checkbox where you can set all of your tables with the same settings, or if you want to uncheck it, you can uh, set your settings for uh, each table individually. We're going to go ahead and check ours so we can do the same settings. This radio button here, uh, starting in MirrorSync 6, MirrorSync can now auto-detect your database keys so you don't have to manually set them. Or if you'd like to, um, like in the uh, previous versions of MirrorSync, you can click manual key setup so that you can manually set them. This next setting is where you can set your sync direction. It can be bi-directional so that changes on your hub are synced to your spoke and vice versa. You can also click this arrow button so that changes that are made on the hub will be pushed to the spoke, but any records that are created on the spoke can either be reverted to match the hub or they can be ignored, which is a much more efficient mirror sync. We'll just leave them alone. Or you can switch the arrow to where only changes on the spoke are synced to the hub. Um, for us, we're going to go ahead and make this a bi-directional sync. This next option I want to talk about is the field selection, and this is actually where you'll set the option that we talked about uh, earlier when we were creating our sync layouts. This first option is you can sync all fields in the table, which means you can put all of your fields on the layout or leave no fields on the layout, it doesn't really matter. Or you can choose to sync only fields on the layout, and that's how mirror sync used to work. Um, where you would drag all of your fields on the layout that you want to sync. Um, regardless of what option you choose, starting in MirrorSync 6, you can now add fields to your syncing tables and MirrorSync will automatically add them to the sync without you having to re-edit your configuration. However, if you choose sync only fields on the layout, you need to make sure that you put those added fields onto your layout. For field merging and conflict resolution, we're going to leave those as defaults. If you want to learn more about those, go ahead and make sure that you check the MirrorSync documentation. Let's click next. This screen talks about using the database version field in the MirrorSync table in order to automatically send new versions of offline files to users or other FileMaker servers after successful sync, which is actually a really cool feature, especially for instance, now uh, MirrorSync is able to pick up fields that you add to syncing tables automatically without having to uh, re-edit your configuration. Existing offline files will continue to be able to sync, but in order to get the new tables and fields you added, they will need to get a new offline file what you could do is once you add those fields, you can go into the MirrorSync table, change the database version, and then 
users would be prompted to download a new file after their next sync, which is pretty cool and kind of streamlines the uh, new file process. Okay, that's it for the configuration setup. Let's go ahead and click finished. This window tells us that we're ready to create download links. So let's go ahead and click OK. Click download database and create link. You're given a few options here. You can choose to download a full copy of the file or an empty clone, and you can also choose to run the initial sync on the client device or the server. What you choose here really depends on your use case. If you're doing any kind of filtering on users, you would want to go ahead and choose empty clone and the server side initial sync. And that's simply because uh, records don't have to be transferred over a network. They're just imported into the file and the file will download. If you're not doing any filtering, uh, we recommend that you go ahead and choose full copy over empty clone because it's faster. And if you're going to choose full copy, then you should choose the client device because it's a little bit simpler and there's no real speed benefit to choosing server side initial sync. For us, we're going to choose full copy and client device and click OK. And now it's been copied to our clipboard. Let's go ahead and open up a browser, paste it in, and the file will start downloading. OK, our file is downloaded. Let's go ahead and open it up. We'll authenticate. We're going to go up here to the script workspace and we're going to run the Mirsync script. We're going to name the device. We'll hit OK. Authenticate again, hit OK, and our sync will run, no changes, hit OK. And then let's go ahead and create a couple more records and run the sync again. And we got our changes, we'll hit OK. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.